Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders Podcast and the Student Body Right Podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Hey, and welcome, everybody, to the glorious episode of the Put On Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with Ryan Holmes, and we are podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful night out here in Southern California. P.O. P-O-R-S-B-R is my Twitter handle, and R-H-O-L-M-22 is Ryan's. Um, please, um, by all means, like, subscribe, all that good stuff to help the show grow. Um, also, the five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts really help as well. Um, Mr. Ryan, how are you? Doing good. Uh, was out for my walk today. Had to avoid a pack of three wild coyotes in my neighborhood. But other than that, uh, a good day. So Yeah, three of them. That, that's not, I did. Three of them. They're, they're working in a pack. So I, twice. so like you, I get up, I get up early. So I get up early, go to the gym. I try to sneak away. Cause like two-year-old, um, but I go to, I go to the gym early, 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 early morning, but I, I like to have coffee when I work out. So every time I go get coffee, I see like coyotes passing across the street. And I'm like, but it's people, people like get up that early in the morning and run. And I'm like, I don't know how y'all they do that shit. Cause I like, guess it's, it's crazy out there. It's crazy. It's just too many coyotes out there. I can't mess with that. Can't mess with that. Yeah, I walk in the morning. I went out. Uh, I've lived here two and a half years. I've never seen a coyote. I know they're in the area, but I go out with my dog. They're staring at me. They're about 50 yards away. Go back in the house. An hour later, I go out. I'm walking around the loop around my house, and three of them are staring at me. So I turn around, <laughs> went back the other way, went yes. out onto the main road. They wouldn't follow me out on the main road where the cars were. So, But I've never seen the coyotes here, and I, I had three of them staring me down today. Yeah, yeah, no joke. Yeah, no joke, man. They look like raggedy dogs, man. I can't mess with them things. Um, let's see here. Let's start off with I had something I wanted to say real quick because this channel is um, Raiders and Trojans. But I wanted to say one thing real quick. Um, this is this is a tweet from Front Office LOS. Um, it's one time Mike Leach told one, one time Mike Leach told one of his players that he wasn't going to play probably at all, but that he'd like to have him he'd like to have him come, have him start coaching as a, as a, um, as, a, as a student assistant, this kid was got pissed off, left the office, came back and the next day and took the job. And that player was former player was Lincoln Riley. So a pretty cool story by him. I know he just passed away. Um, a lot of stuff, you know, the air raid stuff, all the stuff like that. And also the seven on seven stuff you see now, uh, a lot of that was, um, through him. So, um, rest in peace to Mike Leach. He, and he's always, he's always hilarious whenever you get a chance to hear any of his, any, any of his halftime speeches or anything like that. So cool. And, and obviously he had, um, he gave, um, um, Alex Grinch is his first chance as well too. So, uh, rest in peace to him. Um, let's get to some Raider stuff here now. Um, let's see if I can find my notes. The Raiders. Sorry, we'll start with some all 22 stuff first. Oh, I know you got I know you got that all prepared for us, Ryan. So let's start off with the Hollands reverse. I feel like I feel like I feel like I saw in the Rams game, I saw Hollands doing reverses like he was Eric Metcalf uh, every every five seconds in this game. Yeah, it was interesting. The Raiders have run a lot more um zone. They've been more of a zone team the last couple of weeks, running the football, a lot of uh, split zone. So you always, you see Moreau working to that unblocked defensive end on the backside. So the Raiders threw a wrinkle in here, and they're running basically what looks like play action. They're going to fake it to Jake. So it's off of this, that same look, split zone, where you see the, the linemen are going to block to the right. Moreau's going to come for that defensive end, but he doesn't. He arc blocks. He goes around the defensive end, works down the field. You see Devontae Adams. He's got the corner Ramsey at the bottom. And the key here is, is Keelan Cole in the slot is, has a speed release and he's working vertical. So he's trying mm-hmm. to get that, that slot out of there. Um, and this works perfectly. So you, you kind of see that the defense here reacts where they think this is going to be split zone. you got Colton Miller working to the linebacker. You have Andre James working to the other linebacker. They blocked this well. They get 17 yards. Um, they ran a version of this, like I think three times uh, in the game, all for good gain. So, um, nice little wrinkle by by Josh McDaniels to show that zone look that they've been running. 
and then incorporate off that a reverse with basically the same exact lift from the offensive line and Foster Moreau. Uh, and Moreau releases downfield. So, so I just same, wanted to show that. Show that. Yeah. So, so so same formation, but just but it was just something new um, for for the opponents to look at. I you know I noticed Cole Cole kind of continued he, he continued to block a little bit down there too after he finished. Mm-hmm. Um, he really comes out of that release like he's gonna go deep. So I, I, I yeah, that, he's clearing that out. Yeah, he's gonna uh, yeah he clears that out. So yeah, we we, we are, he ran low cardio. We, we we know about running cardio on this show. Um, yeah. that, that, that's that's a good one. There. And they also made a good. They also made a point ninety seven. I forgot his name from the um Rams about the, he's uh oversized defensive end. Um, Three hundred pound defensive end. Yeah. Three hundred pound defensive end. Could could that be one of the reasons why they kind of want to make want to kind of do that as well? Yeah, I mean, he's he's in space, he's unblocked, he has to react to, either he has to come down the line uh, and get to Jacobs if that is a handoff, um, but he's also, if, if that is split zone, then that's the responsibility of Foster Moreau to come and get him and block him, mm-hmm. and so you see him brace for that, and Moreau just goes right around him, um, so it, it's really hard on an athletic defensive end to react to that kind of run action, um, and then have it coming around back the other way, uh, let alone a 300-pound lineman that's out in space just due to necessity that guy's not a normal outside line, outside linebacker and then and then you also have um a fake to a guy who has 1400 yards on the season so i mean you got to react to josh jacobs in that moment all right and let's go to the um one cross touchdown one cross yeah this is this is the the infamous play at the end of the game where the raiders uh, I don't know why. There's no timeouts on the clock. They tackle the guy in bounds. There's 15 seconds. This game's probably over. It takes roughly 14 to 16 seconds to, to run a play, throw it in the, into the field of play, and then run up and get another play off. There's a ch- slight chance they could down it if it's something quick. But uh, either way, you want to live to, to fight another day as a defense. Um, I don't know what Patrick Graham was doing here. I know Josh McDaniels tried to talk about, hey, we tried to play press man. We wanted to give the rush a little bit of chance. But, but they're, they're – the the squeeze or the juice isn't worth the squeeze as they say here they, they, they never should have done this um so essentially they're in a three by one set and, and they're running cover one so it's man coverage with one deep safety uh crosses the weak safety so if you see here that is is Duran Harmon he's up towards he's at linebacker depth his job is to look for any crossing routes coming across the field uh which you get from number three you get from the slot receiver so he kind of works to that slot receiver. What's supposed to happen is the slot corner is supposed to become the low hole defender at that point, but the ball's already out. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at this point. Basically they left Sam Webb, who's an undrafted free agent, one-on-one on the outside with no safety help with no time on the clock. And uh, I'm sorry, no timeouts for the Rams. Um, this would have had to have been a perfect defended play by Sam Webb to knock this ball out. Clearly it didn't happen that way, but I don't know why they're impressed. They should be uh, off technique, you know, eight to 10 yards, make that guy, work vertical to get on top of the corner Mm -hmm. this happened way too easily um they never should have put sam white in that position they should have been at least a two high maybe three safeties across the goal line here um and work the sidelines make them throw the ball over the middle of the field run up tackle game over but obviously the raiders chose not to um they ran this defense basically uh, i think all but one play on that final 98 drive so they didn't change up the looks they said baker here you go we're playing one cross beat us and that's exactly what the rams did and um yeah that's not yeah that's tough to watch um <laughs> that was tough to yeah, watch. Right. that's tough to watch because i mean because it, if you throw the crossing around you tackle and the game's over why, yeah. why are they so concerned about the crossing around the middle of the field yeah exactly yeah and um i mean the raiders had timeouts right so if they didn't feel comfortable in that spot they could have called timeout they could have they could have but you know could've josh really... mcdaniel should have overrode this call and said we are not doing this but um, <laughs> yeah. he did not do that yeah, like they you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, but they didn't. Um, so let's go to the uh, three ten. Uh, we, we got the cross. You got the cover one with um. Same, same defense. This is the same exact call. This is on the drive before on third and ten, um, that allowed them to get the first down. And the problem here is Nate Hobbs. So same defense, three by one, same formation. So you have you know three to the field. You have one to the boundary. Um, you can see they're playing off coverage here at the bottom. Ron Harmon again is looking for the cross. The problem is the help is in the middle of the field. Nate Hobbs uh, opens up with outside leverage. There is no way he can let this receiver get outside. Outside. He has to force this receiver in. Um, And and worst case scenario, like (laughs) you can't give up the out in this defense because that's not where the help is. Like you have outside leverage. So um, this is on Nate Hobbs. So these are the small things that the Raiders are messing up in these coverages. And um, as much as we want to blame Patrick Graham and he deserves a lot of blame, like, 
he had a decent defense for this call. Nate Hobbs just didn't execute, and he allowed the receiver to get outside of him where he has no help. And I will also say that um, if you look at Mr. Max Crosby, he's going to destroy if, – if he gives yeah. – if, if he gives – if Nate Hobbs gives a little bit of outside leverage here, Max Crosby is going to destroy Baker Mayfield on this play. Like, I mean, I mean, it's it's just, I mean, he he destroys seventy nine. I mean, like it's just before the. I mean, good job by um, Baker Mayfield to get the ball off because, like, because I, I, I I'm, I'm surprised he even got the ball off in in this situation. But yeah, I mean, Crosby. Watch gonna, Hobbs though. Oh, Hobbs bad. opens up. He has outside. Like, there's no way he can let this guy get outside of him. Yeah. And, that he turns no outside leverage, and then he kind of plays a little bit of a trail technique and get cut, gets cut trying to grab him at the top of the route, and the guy just speed speed cuts around him. Like He literally ran around the defender. Like you, That can't happen. Yeah, okay. I mean, listen, so I know, for, I for all the Nate Hobbs is a number one truther from, from preseason, like this can't happen. Yeah. And I love Nate Hobbs. And that's that's not a that's a good defense. I mean that's yeah. that I mean like it, it, it's funny because like when they talk about um defense all the time, they'll find the one. I remember coaches always say, every it takes a team defensively because if it's one person out of out of position not doing what they're supposed to do, they're gonna find it. And I, I give yeah, I give them credit for finding that one guy because that because that was I mean that's everyone's covered. Everybody, except everybody, except there, there was nothing. I mean, poor um, I think it was um, was it um, Trayvon Morick? Who had who had the inside? So like it's you know he's just sitting there yeah. doing nothing, wait waiting for something to come vertical and nothing comes. So yeah. Yeah. and Harmon's sitting in the middle of the field uh, as well, so he becomes the low hole defender when there is no cross. So there there's two guys in the middle of the field and Nate Hobbs yeah. gets feet to the outside yeah. when he has outside leverage. Yeah, good times, good times. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. That's um, tough. We we did two bad defense and, and one nice play um, by the offense, but yeah. uh, there wasn't a lot of offensive highlights in this game. There wasn't no. much to show you guys. No, um, it was not unfortunately. Um, so looking at this game, going back and going back and kind of look at the game plan, what the Raiders probably should have done. I, it just feels like, you know, the the week before. You look at the game. You got the game. I looked at all. Looked at the all twenty-two of the Seahawks game, and I just feel like you know, you know, they they could have you know passed a little bit better, um, and and, and maybe tried to maybe try to complete some more passes in in, in this game. Uh, and it really wasn't that wasn't the game plan. It seemed like this game plan was Thursday night football. Let's just we're playing the backups. Let's just try to get out of here so I can get ready to so I can get ready to go play my big boss, my old boss. It was it was like they were trying to. I mean, I think somebody tweeted out a couple people tweeted out this game had a, a feel of a preseason game. It did, and it, it did for the most part. And I don't know why, like the the lack of aggressiveness. It seems like at times by this head coach is kind of baffling because you're the play caller. Don't you want to look good? Don't you want to score thirty points on people? Like I'm not sure why they were so conservative and so like. I mean, they had a couple of third and ones. For, sorry, fourth and ones where they could have just. You know, you you got a you got a good you got a decent offensive line. You got you got a, a whole on the fourth and one. You got backups in there. As long as you, I mean, you have you know so many ways to get the ball to get one yard. They should have been able to move the football and keep and keep some of these drives alive. Yeah, my my two biggest issues I had with the offensive game plan were uh, the run heavy centric wasn't. I didn't have a problem with that. I had a problem with the fact that Josh Jacobs was is coming off an injury and you gave him the ball 27 times on a mm -hmm. short week. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to run the ball, you have to run uh, Zamir white and some of these other guys and, and give Jacobs a blow, but to just keep turning around. Cause Jacobs didn't have that second gear and he wasn't making as many people miss. Um, my other problem was there was the aggressiveness on third down uh, several times. They ran twice, I think on third and short. Um, third and like two and third and five they threw a screen in the red zone on third and nine yeah. that was dropped by turner um, they just didn't take shots down the field and it, and i know mcdaniels in the press conference said uh, we tried to we just couldn't hold up uh, we tried to take some shots and work down the field i didn't see that when watching the tape like there, there was a couple plays but no one was really ever open um i think he did get ultra conservative when he saw the defense was playing fairly well for three and a half quarters he basically um, came out of halftime, and when they got the ball, they, they basically run, run, run. Now, in his defense, I'm not going to put all of this on him. The quarterback has to complete passes on third down if that's the game play, plan. If you get in third and four, third and three, third and five, um, and you don't complete passes, you don't run plays. So all the people that are complaining, well, he only threw seven passes in the second half because they couldn't get first downs. Um, and Derek Carr had a hand in that. Like, they, he wasn't completing yeah. passes on third down. 
Um, that's what happens when you have a good running game. It just, to me, they probably should have scrapped the running game pretty early and just tried to throw the ball, but um, they couldn't block. Let's be honest. The interior three guys were not good. Bars was bad or bars went out early. Simpson was pretty bad. The first three drives he was in, he was missing blocks. Just, I, I mean, I could have posted four or five plays where he just looked lost out there. Like he didn't know what he was supposed to do. There was no rhythm with the rest of the linemen. Um, James got handled pretty well. Greg Gaines is number 91 he, from University of Washington for the Rams. They couldn't block him, and he's a run blocker. He's not really going to give you much in the pass game. And then Dylan Parham didn't play well either. And there were times where Luminor got beat by Leonard Floyd. So I think the offensive line took turns here. Colton Miller had a pretty good game. Um, they didn't really want to feature the backs as much, which I thought was interesting because they, they did a really good job of getting the ball to Jacobs and Abdullah the last couple of weeks. You didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Um so I, they, they did go conservative. I know McDaniel said he didn't call this game any differently. And, and part, partly he's true because when they're running the football for five, six, seven yards of carry, that's what they were doing when they were winning. So it's not like they were dropping back and heaving it all over the yard. So in that defense, they did call the game fairly similarly. I thought the conservative calls were punting on fourth and one, running on third and five, throwing a screen on third and nine. Um, they did it in the first half at work to Abdullah on like third and eight, the oh. first drive. They threw it to him in the flat, but. They, they just didn't throw the ball down the field. They didn't really work the intermediate area. When they did throw it, they got rid of it quick. The offensive line did not play well. Um, this is what happens when you have guys up there. Like, they play well one week. Uh, they don't play well the next week. And, and that's what happens when you have, you know, let's be honest, these are marginal to fringe level players. These aren't pro bowl linemen. Um, so you live with the good weeks, and then you got to live with the week where they're bad. And Josh, Jake, uh, Josh McDaniels couldn't make the adjustment. And he just wanted to – to run the football and try to get out of there on a short week and get the W in the back part. Yeah. I mean, I still, I mean, it's, and I, I think one of the, one of the more, one of the more damning offensive plays was like the, the speed up to the speed, the speed up to the rush to the line to get that third and one. I'm like, yeah. just, just like, make sure that that play has to be right. Cause that, if that play is run correctly. Guess what? The game's over and everything we're talking about is a moot point. You can't, you can't, I mean, in that situation, you got to make sure that play is right. Um, rushing to the line. And I, I paused that play. I watched the play so many times. There's so many Rams at the line of scrimmage on that play. If you call anything but the run up the middle, you probably get the first down. And that player, whether it's Foster Moreau, whether it's, um, you know, you know, J Josh Jacobs, maybe in the flat or whoever, like, I, or, or, I, or let me guess, number 17, Devontae Adams, they're going to be. He was lined up a tailback, though. He was on a bit of back. I mean, well, you know, I yeah, let's see. Huh. I mean, why was he? What like that? I don't know. I mean, throw, the throw, head throw, scratching play. Throw to him in the fly. I don't know. That was that was terrible. Jacob Sanders is pinky misses, and I think like the second play, he was back on the field. They tried to do the the halfback pass back to Carr. Yeah, I saw um, that. But it was covered up. But if you watch the all twenty two, like Devontae Adams is running across the field, pivots works back uh, on an out route. Like, even if Josh Jacobs completes the ball back to, to Carr, it's like an eight to 10 yard game. Like they weren't throwing the ball down the no, field. There was no like vertical route. So it's like, you got a guy, you're asking the running back to try to throw the ball back to Carr, who probably wasn't open because the defensive end kind of stayed in the flat there. Mm -hmm. um, but why are you doing that for eight to 10 yards when the running back has a busted up hand? Like, I, I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. And like, to me, like you can't keep like, you know, you can't keep um, making Zaire White available if you're not gonna if he's not gonna get carries. Like like if, like let Abdullah just be the backup running back. Give give him give Britton Brown and White a sabbatical. Hopefully they can come back next year because they're clearly not ready. Um, they, he had, he had, he had I think on a toss play he he had a Zaire White had a, had a pretty good run in the game. But I mean they're, they're obviously scared to use him. I mean, I mean, twenty eight. I mean, like twenty eight. Like he's like you said, twenty eight carries. When when the guy is just uh, the calf, the pinky. Like, hey, what are we doing here? We're just trying. We just. I mean, we're, we're just like saying, hey, you know, we're gonna run you into the ground because we're not we're not bringing you back or something like that. Like, what are we what are we doing as far as that situation goes? Well, Josh McDaniels is the head coach. It's his call. Oh, I know he says. Yeah, a... I know he says. <laughs> Josh does. Uh, sorry, Jacobs doesn't want to come out of the game. Like, he 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 just doesn't want a breather well that's not his call like at some point the position coach the head coach can say hey come get a breather let's put Zamir White in um I mean let's let, let's say they got a couple first downs in the second half was Josh Jacobs going to carry the ball 35 times in this game like is that really necessary he would have he, he 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 like 
I, I don't understand that. And then you have that big battering around number 45 in the backfield. It's been blowing up Mike linebackers all year. Why do we not have a lead blocker on third and one? If you get a yard, the game's over. Like, yeah. It was like third and half a yard. I'm not even sure it was a full yard. Like, go yeah, back to the quarterback yard. sneak. Do something. Yeah. Like, um, he got he got conservative at the wrong time, and then and then the defense didn't hold up their end of the bargain. Um, they didn't really change up the play calls, and they thought they could just be better. And then then the penalties. You had a penalty on interception by Robertson. You had the penalty on Tillery. You had the offsides on Farrell. Like all of that stuff kind of snowballed, and this team's not talented enough to overcome those kind of mistakes, no matter who they're playing. This I don't know a... if you saw the stat today. They they've played, yeah. I think, um, what is it, eight games against teams under five hundred. They're averaging twenty one points, and they've the only teams they've beaten with a with a losing record in those eight games was the Broncos twice and the Texans. Like, other than that, they can't even beat the bad teams in the league right now. Yeah, no. But they can. They're they're scoring against the better teams. Like they're. They scored 29 against the Chiefs. They scored against uh, the Seahawks. Like, the better yeah. teams in the league, they've they played better. It's 27 yeah. against the Chargers, like, you know. So, that's on yeah. the coaching, and then that's just, yeah. like, it's it's. we go back to the the lousy, fair, like, approach Josh McDaniels has had all year where there's been no sense of urgency. And you see that happening in these games over and over and over again. So, I, yeah. um, having said all that, I, I still think Josh McDaniels comes back next year. I do not see Mark Davis moving on from him. I do think it's interesting though with the with the whole Josh McDaniels thing because he does realize that if we you know if we had this we're, we're doing our show next year this time and he's five and eight again like he's, he's in trouble he's gone <laughs> he, like, he, he, I mean so like you can like you can like kind of kind of like sit here and try to make make it seem like oh I just gotta get rid of Gruden's guys gotta get my guy that whole like I get my guys in. You can you can play that game if you want, but I mean you know a lot of times sometimes your my guys get hurt. Sometimes a lot of things happen in an off season. Like sometimes you get my guys and you know they become Chandler Jones and don't you know perform at, at the level you think they're gonna perform. So you gotta be real careful with that whole situation as far as that goes. Um, the Raiders, Most of this team is his guys though. Let's I, be honest. I know like, I know that's what that's what we, we keep like, we, we keep talking about that, but, but nobody seems to realize. Huh. <laughs> go look at the roster last i counted 32 of the guys were new i would think now with some guys on ir we're probably approaching 36 37 of the 53 yeah. for guys that weren't on this team last year yeah 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 you're right you're right you're right um twitter poll i just saw about 2023 you want to guess like around the percentages of between the, the question was Who's going to be back with the Raiders next year? Or oh, sorry, who won't be who won't be back with the Raiders next year? And it, it was Renfro, Waller, Josh Jacobs, and and DC. I have to pick one of those four. Yeah, who had the high? Who had the highest? Who had the highest? I'm going to guess Waller because the fans hate Waller. <laughs> so 44% was Waller, 25% yeah. was Josh Jacobs, 23% was Derek Carr, and 7% was Hunter Renfro. Boy, does this boy does this fan base hate Darren Waller? Yeah, I, I would I would say more likely than not he is back because he's a difference maker when he's healthy. It, um, I know he's been hurt, but yeah, it's it has it's been different injuries. I know it's lower body, older guy, but um, I think it was a knee last year he hurt in the Cowboys game, and then it, and obviously at both hamstrings this year. But they're not going to be able to go out and find like a guy that can do what he can do when he's healthy. I know availability yeah. is the best ability. We keep hearing yeah. that. Well. Let's start talking about Hunter Renfro. He's always hurt, and he's fumbling the ball over the field when he is healthy, but yes. fans love Hunter Renfro. But I would much rather have Darren Waller than Hunter Renfro because I think he's a better complement in this offense. But yeah. that's my opinion. And people, and I love you, Hunter Renfro. Me too. And I, but I think, one, I think in that first game with Bryce Callahan, I think, they, I think the thing that people are doing now is they're not allowing him to that space, especially in this offense, to do – to make those plays where like, you know, those, um, those moves at line of scrimmage where people can, he can make people look foolish and they can replay it all, all over, all over on, um, on Twitter and social media all the time. He, he they're just bagging him at the line of scrimmage being as physical as humanly possible with him. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens as far as that goes. But yeah, but boy, I tell you, don't, I'm, hey, if you go into game Sunday, don't, don't be cheering Darren Waller touchdown because y'all yeah. like, y'all don't like Darren Waller. So I want to hear, I want to hear about it. I want to hear about it on that one. Um, it, it does sound like we're going to get all of those guys on the field this week though because the plan was 
oh, we can't possibly lose to the Rams. Let's just get out of the Ram game. I'm playing my old boss. I'm gonna whip his ass. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring all the guys back, and then we're gonna just open up a can on him. And I'm like, okay, we'll see. I right, we'll see. So I mean, we've seen that we've seen that happen. People try to do that to Belichick before in the past. He has no quarterback, but he got winning record somehow. I don't know how that how that happens. He somehow he somehow always kind of manages that as well. So do you feel like they have not been on the field for a long time at all? It seems like it seems like it seemed like it was like a season ago um, with Adams, Waller, and Renfro. What are some of the things you're worried about, and what are the things you're excited about to have um, those guys back on the field? I'm excited on third down. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think they both play a ton of snaps. Uh, I think that they, they'll have packages for each one of them based on uh, down distance. Uh, I think on third down, you'll see those guys on the field. I don't think you're going to see Darren Waller out there for 60 snaps or Hunter Renfro for 60 snaps. You might see Waller for 30. You might see Renfro for 20. I think you're still going to see plenty of what they've been doing, 21 personnel with two backs, Matt mm-hmm. Collins and, and Devontae Adams, because – they can't drop back and try to throw the ball 35, 40 times against the Patriots defense. It's not going to work. Um, mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to block Matt Judon enough to do that. Mm-hmm. So I, I still think you're going to see a lot of ground and pound, try to control the clock, and then take their shots on third down or in the red zone. They're going to have packages for those two guys. Yeah. Um, so that uh, you're still going to see plenty of Foster Moreau. Uh, my question is, what, uh, let's just see what this offense looks like over the next four weeks with those guys on there. Like if this truly is the offense they thought it was going to be, they yeah. shouldn't be scoring 16, 17, 20 points at this point. Like we need to get into the, the upper 20s. Let's break 30 a couple times here the last couple of weeks and yeah. see what this offense can do. Um, if Assuming the offensive line can hold up because, you know, now they have injuries. We don't know what Illuminor status is. Yeah. Bars is, is injured. Um, Simpson's not there anymore. Man, Simpson must have done something. I know that the film wasn't very good yeah. uh, for Simpson, but they were just like, oh, we saw you play. You're out of here. See ya. Like, with no other options on the roster, they had to go out and get a guy from the Broncos. They, they went out. They elevated a center off the practice squad. Like, if anything happens to a, a alignment over the next two or three weeks, like, they're, they're running out of options quick. Yeah. And they didn't even have options to begin with. Yeah, no question about it. So that's that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun to see what happens there. Cause so they so they did. So you mentioned Simpson. The Raiders did add a couple of pieces here. Let's talk about. Um, so I mean, there's nothing really to talk about. They're just there's we talk about street corners. Um, they, they, these are street linemen. Um, off the off the practice squad. There's nobody to. I saw some some content creators talk about you know monster tackle from the from so and so like our monster guard from the Broncos like the Raiders sign like these monsters would monsters would start. Um, none of these guys are starters, so um, there they was they, they'll be starting in an emergency, and the and the Raiders may be in, in an emergency um, coming up this week um, against Judah and Ocho. I mean, well, Oche, whatever his name is, I forgot. I can't say his last name. That's Uche. Uche, Uche, yeah, Uche. He, he's okay. he's Uche. Yeah, he's good. He's he's a good pass rusher as well too. Um, so come, some questions here. Um, one that has to do with college football. Um, do you feel like Bush to get his um, his Heisman back? I mean, we talk, I'm a little biased. But yeah, yes, I would yes, say yes. Yes, yeah, I would say yes. I would say yes. Um, there's a lot of um, Brady buzz to the Raiders. I saw on Pat, Pat McAfee. I saw on John Middlecoff's um, um, on podcast as well. Do you believe any of the hype that um, Brady could be coming to Las Vegas? I don't. Um, he's going to be 46 next year. He hasn't played that well this year we see we'll see i mean he still has mike evans chris godwin over there and tampa's offense is almost unwatchable because the offensive line isn't good like unless the raiders can figure out how to get a top five offensive line this offseason you're going to see kind of the same struggles with brady like he can't move anymore Mm -hmm. um he can he can navigate in the pocket um but he's going to get frustrated a lot uh, uh, with this team if the offensive line doesn't doesn't improve. And I, and I think I tweeted out, too, the other day. I, if I could buy stock, a future stock, and where these offensive linemen are going in the draft, I would take them a lot. They're going to go a lot higher than everyone's putting them on these these yeah. mock drafts. And stuff. Yeah, There's man. so many teams that need offensive linemen. Yeah, exactly. As bad as the Raiders' offensive line is, Miami and the Chargers' offensive line looked worse. Yeah, uh, And then every time I turn on a game, I'm like, that offensive line is worse than the Raiders, and the Raiders aren't any good. Like, yeah. the bar is so low right now they competent offensive linemen. Um, I think they're going to go good. But I, I, I just don't see – unless there's a 
an ultimatum from Mark Davis, and he looks at Josh McDaniels and says, you have to make the playoffs next year. And he says, screw it. And he goes to get his guy, Brady. That's the only way I can see it happening if he truly believes that the car can't be the guy. I mean, yeah. I, 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 to me, it's going to be hard because that car deadline on that contract's coming up the third, third calendar day of the year. So yeah. somewhere in mid February, yeah. like they're not going to have his replacement um, lined up at that point. So like for them to really, one, they can't just let him go because you're going to need compensation for him, but he has a no trade clause. So the Raiders are going to have to sit down and they're going to have a long off season to figure this out. And then whoever they bring in, they're going to have to sell Devontae Adams on. Um, so it, it's going to be a mess for those guys, but this is a mess they created. Uh, so nice. I, so this is up to Ziegler. They're going to have to fix it this off season because if they go next year and they end up, yeah. like you said, seven and 10, uh, they, I just don't see a way that McDaniels can survive for year three. It's funny. Cause like, what if, I mean, if, could you imagine like if the Dana White stuff is true and let's just say, you know, he goes, Brady goes somewhere else and has a good season next year, the carnage online to say we had, we had a chance to get Brady twice and we, we, we chose we, we the, our coach chose Derek Carr. They're gonna, the people are gonna go crazy. But he has not given me a reason to think that. As much as I mean, as much as I, much as I think about that move, I'd have to think about it long and hard. I when I watch them play, especially when I watch them play, people at the highest level who can really get after the quarterback. The Saints can get after the quarterback. The um the Niners can get after the quarterback. Like that's what I want to see what he can do in those moments because you're trying to get to a certain level. You're not just trying to go beat, you know, you know, the Texans. You're trying to beat the top of the line. If he can't get, if he can't, you know, complete passes, if he can't, you know, avoid the rush, if he can't do those things against those teams, then I don't know if, you know, that, that that's the best move for them, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But there, but there is people talking about that um, around, around the, around the Twitter sphere, as far as that goes. Um, If you could go ahead. I think you want to say something. I I would say, for 2023, if I just had to pick one of those two players, I, I would take Derek Carr. And, and I'm not the biggest Carr fan out there. I, I think he's somewhere in the 12 to 14 range in the league. But mm-hmm. I think next year, Carr will have a better season than a 46-year-old Tom Brady. I just I just don't see how Brady can keep producing. And, mm-hmm. and statistically, Brady's had a fine season. Uh, I just don't think the offensive line, the pressure, everything that's going on in Vegas, I, I don't think that Tom Brady is going to come in here and beat Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert and lead this team to a division title. I think best case scenario is he somehow can figure out how to get to 10 wins. And then you're probably out in the first or second round of the playoffs anyways. So I don't think it's worth it uh, just for that. Mm-hmm. He's not yeah. going to win a Super Bowl, So huh, I- I'm not making that move. If he was 38 years old, then absolutely. That's a totally oh, yeah. different conversation. Interesting. Interesting. We'll see. We'll see. I- I'm-, I'm not, that'd be, that's such, a, that's such a hard conversation. Um, I'm, I'm, I, that would be a tough one. That'd be a tough one for me. Um, if you could change any rule in the NFL um, for a year, um, what would you, what would what would it be? I would make roughing the passer reviewable. Absolutely, like these mm-hmm. calls are brutal. They're game changing calls. Yeah, I just it's so it, they don't even call it fair. Like some teams get some calls on it, some don't. And then it, it's not even consistent from referee to referee. They just yeah. throw the flag and they make up some BS excuse after the game. The one on the one in the dolphin charger game, boy, that was rough. That was rough. If you can't do that, what like you, John, what are you supposed to do? He's six, six, two forty. Like, <laughs> like, John, like John Maddie used to say, if you can't do that, you can't play football. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was, that was, that was a tough one. Um, I, I, I the five, the five yard automatic first down, Ooh, that that's just to me the five. I can give you the five yard and replay it down, but that automatic first down is just it burns me. It really it just it seems like it's just every possible call um, goes 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 towards the offense. The only defensive call that I would say that really helps the defense is like if you if intentional grounding where like you know you lost a down everything like that. So but yeah that 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 kind of that one burns me man. I hate that holding call. Like let me if if it's third and fifteen that five yard holding, I give you the five yards, but you got to run that shit back. Like, and try to get the first down yourself. Like I can't give you an automatic first down for that as well. Do you think, would it be, would it be, do you think, do you think it would be more pass interference if the college, if they had, if they went to the college rule to the, to the NFL, they, they, they would just grab receivers, right? They wouldn't even, yeah. they would just grab, yeah. So I mean, yeah. if it's 15 yards, especially yeah. if you're working, you know, 40, 50 yards down the field on a deep ball and you're beat, just grab the guy at that yeah, point. Yeah, grab the guy at that point, yeah. 
Makes I would like to change the rule that a strip sack that gets recovered by the quarterback and advanced past the line of scrimmage is no, not a sack, sack. <laughs> for Max Crosby. Because I so hate silly. looking at the sack leaders and going, he's got 11 and a half. He really has 12 and a half. Like, he yeah. should be third in the league. Um, I, you're someone's still going to have to explain that one to me. You can't call it a fumble and just say it was picked up by that player in advance. Like, yeah, it's not that stupid. difficult. Uh, yeah, that's stupid. That's stupid. How crazy was it with, with the Tyreek Hill um, fumble return? My God. The, the dude, he's just – He's fast as hell. He's ridiculous. Um, it, 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 even on a bum ankle, he, he he's tough. To, he, he's tough to deal with. Um...